Welcome back to this special edition of Return on Wellness. We are here on location at Canyon Ranch in Woodside, California. I am joined with David. David, what's your official title here? I am a fitness instructor at Canyon Ranch. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, background in kinesiology and I have a certification in the CSCS for strength and conditioning specialist. Okay, awesome. And we worked out this morning. Correct. Which was fantastic and also miserable, but I expect workouts to be miserable. Um, we did, we did a, a rep scheme I've never done before, which I really enjoyed. Um, we did, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we basically, everything we did, we, we used kettlebells, which is also great because it's not a normal steady thing that you can hold on to. Right, right. And so you engage a lot more stability and things of that nature. But um, we would do a, a normal speed rep, like a one count down, one count up, or contract and release. Um, we'd do two reps of that, and then we would do a slow count uh, so that it was time under tension. Right. And then we did two of those, and then we'd repeat, and then switch to the other side. It, I really enjoyed it, so I wanted to say well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, is, that, is that your own proprietary madness, or did you find it somewhere? I mean, you think working in the profession of uh, strength and conditioning, you always find things from other people that you can use. And they're always there to help you. I know that uh, one person I like to follow a lot is Christian Thibodeau. So I'll give him yeah. props for that because he, he's an amazing strength coach. And he's up there in the upper echelon of being mindful of, uh, you know, learning, um, teaching people how to do fitness and just so um, knowledgeable. It's ridiculous. Awesome. So I love that. Being here at Canyon Ranch, we, you, you get a wide variety of clientele. When you offer a 8 a.m. class like this morning, you don't know who's going to show up. Right. So I'd love to talk about kind of your approach to those classes and fitness so that when you get a varying level of, of skill levels, how you can approach that so that people feel comfortable. I think one of the things that makes people feel comfortable is being personable. I mean, we work with such a diverse group of individuals from the younger to the older population. But I also find that, uh, you know, people come in here for different reasons, whether it's for wellness or whether they're dealing with the injury or whether they're just dealing with the loss and trying to get over things. So you really have to be open-minded and be ready for anything because sometimes it's an emotional thing versus something that's uh, more about getting better in their goals when it comes to fitness. So I think it just starts with being personable and then making it so that everyone's welcome, no matter what their um, level of fitness is. Awesome. I love that. And then obviously with the programming, you can adjust that based on a person's abilities or needs or whatnot. Correct. So I just try to keep to primal movements, regular patterns like squats, lunges, hinging patterns, pulling and pressing and things like that. Things that we do in our daily, daily lives. But also, you know, making sure that I'm allowing for modifications, making sure that I address that before um, class at hand. Sometimes people are more than obliged to um, let me know about what they're dealing with. So that helps a lot. So I can give them alternatives while everyone's doing something else. So I'm trying to balance between the two different types of uh, people with regard to that during the class sessions. Fair enough. Can you give me a little rundown of the variety of types of classes you guys offer? Because like this morning we were working with kettlebells and that was unexpected. Right. Um, but then you, there's also other types of, there was, a, and then there was another class afterwards, right? Right. And then there, there was one before that as well. I mean, we offer everything that incorporates uh, fitness, right? There's a class for stretching. There's a class for uh, body weight, which we use straps, similar to TRX straps, except we use lift straps. We do uh, class outdoors with bands, so we use bands. And then of course we use the kettlebells. And then we work on things such as uh, range of motion using foam rolling and stretching. So I think it just encompasses everything that works along with fitness, aside from offering yoga and things like that. And that's kind of covering the whole uh, aspect of, of fitness itself. Yeah, last night I went to the yin yoga which i had never heard of i'm probably because i'm not a yogi person um it enlightened me that there's a new form of yoga that i'm terrible at 
Um, for people who aren't familiar with yin yoga, I know you didn't teach the class. Right. I got to go home, but you're familiar with it. Just a little bit. I took a little bit of yoga back in college. It really helped me with my lower back. But um, I think for me, just doing the stretching, having to do that is, is enough for me. But go ahead with your... Uh, so going? I was going to have you kind of explain. I, I found it really interesting. I, I probably benefited more from outside of the realization of, oh, I suck at this too, um, of the setup of what yin yoga is compared to traditional like hot yoga and that type of thing. She explained it at the beginning of class, and I'd, if you're up for it, I'd love it if you could explain that a little bit as well of, of what the yin behind the yin yoga means. Well, I think just going from the a perspective of a little bit of finding balance, right? And I think that just goes back to fitness itself, right? For, for instance, I do the stretch class and then you have yin yoga and there's uh, the other types of yoga that are offered here at Canyon Ranch. So I think it's just about finding something that fits for you, whether it's your strength or your stretching, right? There's different ways to go about it. It's just what works best for you and sticking to that and finding something that calls to you a little bit better. Awesome. I love it. Um, and I think that's why I, I've noticed in the, in the schedule of programming, there's stuff happening frequently because there's hikes and that kind of stuff too. Right. right? Um, and it's happening all the time so that there's always something fun for you to try and see what you like best. Right. And it all seems similar to some sense, but if you get, once you get a taste of it, you realize there's a subtle difference in between the hikes. There's a subtle difference in between yoga versus dynamic stretching. There's a subtle difference between working outside or working indoors with kettlebells. So I right. think it's just uh, taking on one and finding your uh, niche in, in the other. Fair enough. Um, have you have you had anybody, uh, or, or can you can you share a story about someone who maybe was, let's say, nervous or hesitant? to try one of the fitness classes and they did and you saw them kind of blossom during that that class um, i think doing things like fitness in the redwoods is one of the classes that i like doing just having guests go out in the redwoods having some fun be exploring um, the outdoors it kind of takes their mind off of fitness and then we have these challenges that the guests do with, with one another sometimes they feel like they can't do it we have these walls for example that they feel like they can't climb but when someone cheers them on, I'm there to help them as well. I think they feel more empowered. And I think that's kind of missing in the fitness industry that, you know, together people feel more empowered to work out, more inclined to show up in the, in the studio or the gym, wherever they're working at. And that empowers them. And then they realize this is what I've been missing. You know, just someone to go out with me and do the fitness with me, but also, you know, not underestimating myself, knowing that I could actually probably do this once I tried it, but it just took someone to get me there and to come to that realization. Yeah. Um, so you met, you mentioned a term, I don't know if it's trademarked or not, fitness in the redwoods. Uh, maybe, maybe for us, I'm not it might be, sure. I, it could be. I don't know. Um, what exactly is that? So we start off with uh, going down into the forest. We go off with a rope pull and then we'll climb over some walls. And then we'll head on down to some monkey bars and then we'll take it to a small Buddha trail, which we walk around with sandbags over our back. And of course, this is all just for fun to have fun with the guests for them to get to know each other. But it's also a way to build some camaraderie and learning about someone's fitness journey, perhaps someone's life. Do they exercise? Do they do this? Do they do that? But also on the way, there's these challenges and everyone's trying to cheer everyone on to complete these challenges that someone may think, oh, this is a joke, why am I doing this? I do this for a living and I can do this all day in my sleep. Where some people, they look at it and it's like, I've never done this before, I'm kind of scared. And they come to the realization that, you know, with everyone there, having some moral support, they're actually able to do these things. And when they accomplish these things on the trail, such as like the monkey bars, for example, I get a lot of guests that are hesitant about that. But when they're able to accomplish that, they feel strong within themselves. And then they start to realize that they're a lot stronger than they actually were. And that perhaps, you know, maybe they could do some of these things on their own, or maybe it just takes someone to help them get to that point to show up to the gym, to show up every morning and 
get my morning walk in and just to get moving. It, it's an incredible metaphor for life because all of our challenges are different. We all face different things. And when you have people around that encourage you, it, it makes any challenge a heck of a lot easier. Definitely. Definitely. Um, the, there's something special about shared suffering. I call, I like to call it trauma bonding for good <laughs> because the, there's, it must be fun to be there when you see these people that approach this thing as basically strangers. And by the end, they're like laughing and they've like made new friends. I'm guessing you probably see that fairly often. Oh, of course, of course. When, this, when these different people go have this shared experience, right? do they all seem to walk away with, in the same way? Like, do they all seem transformed to a certain extent? No, I, I would agree. I would definitely agree that they do seem transformed. I, I think going back to your point, you know, being together helps create more of a bond. But I also think it makes it more of an enjoyment. It takes their mind off actually doing work because they're, they know someone that they're close to or they're getting to know someone. So it makes it fun for them. But I also think too that, you know, in the grander scheme of things, you know, not being alone and having someone who's went through a shared experience, even though they're just going out and having fun, it's going to be a memory that they can take home with each other. And I think that creates a foundation to, to help build some teamwork, but also Hey, may, maybe, you know, we might go work out together and that might motivate me a little bit more. And that person didn't know that, hey, this has been my problem the whole time. I don't know how to show up to the gym because there's no one to motivate you. But now I know that you like fitness. Maybe I might ask this person to join me next time and we'll go out and have some fun outside and work out versus going to the gym or something like that. Yeah. Perfect. I think that's it. All right. Um, let's wrap. Beautiful. All right. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for making it easy. Yeah. I tried. No, you did more than try. I was I was thinking I was gonna be completely nervous and get stuttering in my words and things like that. But well, it good. really helps uh, because you seem very humble. Well, so thank you. Thank you. I, I fitness changed my life and I I know the power it has. And I just I for the people who are intimidated or scared of trying it, I just I want them to realize that we all started somewhere and there's no reason for them not to give it a shot. But you know, the funny thing is you say that too. And then when you're around the upper echelon of those strength coaches and things like that, they're so incredibly arrogant and unapproachable and it, it's a total turnoff. I, I don't even like going to those conferences because of that. Yeah. Some of them I can't even approach, even though I wish I could talk to them and learn more about it. And just having people like you just making things like a lot more open to the, to the real world people who are actually doing fitness and just want to do it for a healthy lifestyle that's where what we need more of. yeah just so that you can keep your independence you don't have to as you get older you don't you're not you don't have to move into a self-care or a, a assisted living facility as early like you can see sky see listen to this guy <laughs> i'm glad i i started exercising at 18. i don't want to end up like that with someone taking care of me yeah yeah i like Everyone's people talk trash about burpees because they're freaking awful. But like it literally, it is the anti I've fallen and I can't get up. It's true. It is. It is just you're intentionally throwing yourself on the ground and getting back up. Um, because you can. So, okay. Were you recording all that? Yes. All right. Perfect.